We begin with breath. We begin with breath. Take a moment. We begin with breath to honor the breath that has been taken. We honor the sky, we honor the stars, we honor the sun. We honor all living entities of the world. We honor the earth, the wind, the fresh water. We honor all ancestral spirits who sit at the foot of the world. We humbly acknowledge our indebtedness to the ancestors and stewards of this land, who we know to be the Willow Sammamish people. When we do so, we are not simply giving tribute to people who are no longer here. Rather, we are asking permission and invitation by those co-presences who live on and in this land, whose ancestral energies are at work here and now with us that they continue to be present with us, that they continue to allow us to do our work with humility and kindness, with generosity, with care. We call on them so that we may attune to and resonate with their existence. And especially we call on Kenny Moses, who was a cultural and spiritual worker here um, in Bothell for the Sammamish people. We acknowledge our indebtedness to all more than human life, all the forces and energies of this land. We pay respect and praise the waterways, the salmon, the birds, the trees, the soil and the stars. We have to be aware that in this moment, living in this highly militarized society, we automatically think resistance and power in terms of violence, domination, submission. Our liberation is not simply going to happen with fists and bullets. We have to understand that we are in this moment in a battle of the psyche. That battle will be won on the terrain of spirit. And spirit is with us tonight. Battle happens as we fortify our communities by transforming the poetics of our relations. On this earth, la tierra, las piedras. We must change how we relate to each other and to the world. This is what indigenous ways teach us. The ways our ancestors guide us is through doing this work, through honoring our relations. So part of what we're doing with this land acknowledgement is to initiate a regular practice here on the campus of UW Bothell of consistently acknowledging the lands on which you live and work, on which we live and work, as those of the Sammamish Willow people and the people who continue to live on and struggle for this land, because sometimes when we make these acknowledgements, it's like those people aren't still here and someone else has taken over, but we don't, that's not actually what a net land acknowledgement is. Rather, it is to open our hearts and open our spirits and open our energies and our work to the work of those people that continues to, that continue, that continue to work on and live on these lands, whether as ancestral energies or as folks doing work in community. We commit and recommit ourselves in each moment, at every step, at every moment that we reach to each other, that we communicate with each other, that we touch each other, with each small interaction up to the largest, large-scale interactions to the practice of social justice. Social justice does not just happen on large scale. It's not just about holding up a sign. Social justice happens in transforming how we relate to each other, how we recognize our world, how we relate to the, to the land, to the food, to the animals, to 
you know, us as animals to all of the living entities on this world, on, in this world. And in, in each action, in, in these thoughtful actions, in these thoughtful steps, we recommit to change our relationships to this land, to all living entities of this land, and to our communities who continue to struggle and survive on this land. Showcase. Uh, Imagine is a part of Alive. What is Alive? Alive began in 2017, and it's an effort uh, to feature students' original performance research projects produced across various IAS courses. Pretty much what that means is that it's made up of a few performances, one of those being Open Studio Week. Open Studio Week has been going on for the last two, two weeks. weeks. And what's been going on is that performance classes, these dance classes and everybody like that, okay. have been putting on their best performances, and within those groups, yep. they've been handpicking their favorite, and you're gonna be able to see those tonight. Yes, so, but before that, we need you guys to pull out your phones. So I know you guys all have phones. Pull out your phones, let me see them phones. Let's see those phones. Let me see them phones. If you don't have a phone, that's okay. But yes. if you have a phone, pull it out. Yes. If you have the app, Get on Instagram. Get on Instagram. We need you to go to the search and type in UW UW Alive Festival. Festival. Take a selfie, post it, tag us. Winner might get something. There might not be a winner, who knows? <laughs> Without further ado, put your hands together for the 2019 Imagine, Imagine Showcase. Showcase. J. 
generation separated from our ways Which guide us and unite us and tie us to the sacred We give thanks and we chant prayers in our ancestors' language
I was born out of here. In other words, I was born not normal. I was born out of here, but I didn't know it was out of here for the first couple of years of my life. You see, I got my first hearing aid way back when I was in kindergarten. I didn't know they were hearing it. They, I get to pick the color, and I get to wear it in my ear, and I thought they made me look pretty fly. <laughs> now, it was until I made it to second grade when I learned that I was part of here. You see, I was taken out of class for speech therapy, and I always wondered why. And they sat me down, back on the chair, and they broke the knees to me. Why? You do know you're hard of hearing, right? And that was when I realized I wasn't normal. Everyone was able to hear fly on it, but not me. Everyone was able to hear whisper, but not me. Everyone was able to hear whistle, but not me. I, I was not human. I wanted to be normal. I wanted to be just like everyone else. I wanted to be able to be equal to you. I wanted to be human. Now, all my class members didn't really care much about it, but every time they tried to include me into any activity, there was always that idea in the back of my mind. I'm not equal to you. I cannot be as humane as you. I can't experience the same life as you. And that stuck with me all the way until I made it to fifth grade. Here in fifth grade, we had to pick our own music class. How I want a deaf kid to take music class. You had to choose between choir, band, orchestra. I stuck with band, but I had to. I picked up my trumpet, and I played my first note on the first day of band. Poorly, I might. Poorly. But, I played. The very first song I learned on it was Mary Had a Little Man with my classmates. And I played with them. With. I fit in. I was able to play with my own band member. I was able to actually be just as good as my other peers. I fit in.
Hey, buddy. Hey, Frank. I got, I got some ice here now. I don't want any goddamn ice. It's cold. I thought it might help. Well, it don't. It's cold. It's supposed to be cold. It's ice. She was going to these goddamn rehearsals every day. Every day. Every single day. Hardly ever saw her. I saw enough to believe you me. I saw enough to know something was going on. Wait, you didn't really kill her, did you? I'm no dummy. Doesn't take much to put it all together. One well, starts dressing more and more skimpy every time she goes out, putting on more and more smells. Oils. She was always oiling herself up before she left. Coconut or butterscotch or something. Sweet stuff. You'd have thought she was an ice cream sundae. I'd watch her oil herself up, opportunity to be asleep. She was in a dream the way she did it. Like she was imagining someone else touching her. Not me though. Never me. Someone else. Some guy. I don't know. Some actor jerk. I could tell she was getting herself ready for him. Tell right away. It got worse and worse. I found the collar on it. She denied it flat. I could tell she was lying too. The way she took it so light, cast it off as if it was nothing. She starts telling me it's all in my head. Some imaginary deal I cooked up in my head. Trying to make me believe I was crazy. And she's all innocent and I am crazy. So I told her, I told her, I laid it on the line to her square business. I said, no more high heels. No more wearing those high, spiky, high heels to rehearsals. No more of that shit. And she laughs. Right in my face, she laughs. Kept putting them on every morning, putting them back on. She says they're right for the character. It's, it's, it's right for the part. Okay. But then I told her she had to wear a bra. She paid no attention to that either. You can see right through her blouse, right clean through it. Oh. <laughs> she never wore underpants either. That's what really got me. No underpants. She could see everything. Why, she never wore underpants anyway, did she? How do you know? I mean, I think, I think you told me once or twice. I never told you that. I would never tell you a thing like that. That's personal. Okay, forget it. Forget I never would have told you that. Just forget it. You, know, you like you it, know what? you, Frank? You, you, know, <laughs> you, you know what? Just, I came here to try to help you, but if you're not, I'm just going to take a walk right out of here. I mean, come on. Okay. So she starts reading the lines with me at night, right? Reading the lines in bed at night. I'm helping her out, right? Helping her memorize the damn lines so she can go off every day and same as some other guy. Day after day, same lines. And these lines are all about how she's bound and determined to get this guy back in the sack with her after all these years he's been ignoring her. How she loves him even though he hates her. And how she's saving up her body for him and him only. It's just a play, wasn't it? Yeah, a play. That's right. Pretend. That's what she said. Just pretend. I know what it's all about. I know damn well what they're doing. I know what this acting shit is all about. They try to believe they're the person, right? They try to believe so hard they're the person that they think they actually become the person. So you know what that means, don't you? What? They start doing all the stuff the person does. What person? The, the, the person, the, uh, the what? Characters? Yeah, that's right. The character. They start acting that way in real life. Just like the character. Walking and talking that way. You should have seen the way she started to walk and talk. I couldn't believe it. Changed everything. Her hair. She put on a wig. Changed her clothes. And she was unrecognizable. I didn't even know who I was with anymore. So I told her. I told her. Look, I don't know who you think you are now. But I just assume you come back to the real world here. And you know what she tells me? What? She says, this is the real world. This acting shit is more real to her than the real world. Can you believe that? And she was trying to convince me that I was crazy. Oh, come on, Jake. Come on. You know, when, when would she have time for this during rehearsals? On her lunch break. On her lunch break? Really? Yeah. Sit okay. down, sit back no, down. I got more to tell you. I'm not gonna sit down. I'm not gonna sit down. I'm not gonna sit here listening to your bullshit about Beth going around and sleeping with some other guy. She was! It's easy to tell when a woman gets obsessed with something else when she moves away from you. They don't hide it as easy as men. <laughs> okay. 
So you, so you're just telling me that just because she's taking part in this play, you know, it, and you're just going to come to this kind of conclusion about what she was, she was doing? That's no job. I've had jobs before. A job is where you work. A job is where you don't have fun. You don't dick around trying to pretend to be someone else. You work. It's a work is work. It's a different kind of job. It's an excuse to fool around. That's what it is. <laughs> That's why she wanted to become an actress in the first place. To get away from me. Well, you, you, just, you just went ahead and beat her up again, didn't you? Killed her. You killed her? That's right. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Was she still breathing? No, everything stopped. She wasn't breathing. Well, maybe she was just unconscious or something. No, no. Did you call the police? No, I didn't call the police. She was already dead. What could they do about it? Well, you're supposed to call the police and report it. Even when you kill them? Yeah, especially when you kill them. I never heard of that. I'm telling you, you just, you just lost your temper. You just went and lost she provoked your temper. it! You just lost your temper. You just went and lost your temper. You know, you just went, just like, just like when we were kids. When we were kids, you lose your temper and blame it on somebody else. Always blaming it on somebody else. Remember, you blamed it on the goat once, too. What goat? You remember the milk goat we used to have? What was her name? What was that goat's name? Come on, you remember that goat. Yeah, I remember that goat. I love that goat. Oh, you, you love that goat. You love that goat so much that, that you went ahead and kicked her square in the chest and broke her ribs. I never kicked that goat. Oh, you don't remember? Because I remember. I remember because you kicked that goat so hard you broke your foot. Whoa. Whoa. What was that goat snake? Just get away from me! You okay? Just get away! Can I get you something? No, I don't need nothing. Let's, let's get you back on the couch, man. I don't need any help. Come on, let's get you, let's get you on the couch. It's, it's okay. It's okay, buddy. Why now? Why am I missing her now, Frankie? Why not? Why not then when she was there? Why am I afraid I'm gonna lose her? Oh, she's already gone. Oh, and this fear, this fear swarms through me. It floods my body to the and left. Nothing look up to me. Like I've died from losing her. Like my whole life was lost. Just lost. Go over to their folks' house. I'm sure they know what happened there. My back's ice. Why is my back so cold? Let me, let me go get you a blanket. Let me go get you a blanket. No, don't leave. It's okay, it's okay. Just, just sit here with me for a while. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Don't leave. I won't.
members, Professor Ali and Professor B, um, are the organizers of this event, which is the Critical Acts Artist Residency, which is part of the Alive 3.0. And what we do is we aim to broaden and deepen visiting artists' engagement with wider communities of the PNW, AKA Pacific Northwest. This quarter we had four performers, indigenous artists come in. Those being Ryan Federson, Stormy Weber, Weber Dakota Kamocha, and Greg Deal. Uh, two of those artists, Dakota and Greg, were here for a week as a part of, as, as a part of the Residency Artist um, Critical Acts program. This is a really big deal for us because we get the chance to um, interact with real artists that are well known, have a lot of experience. This is a really big deal because uh, students and many other people get the chance to talk with these artists and get a more hands-on approach. Without further ado, let's get back to the show. God, Julio, really, it's fucking freezing out here. This is it. God, Julio. Really, oh. Go stay in the car if you're so cold. God, Julio. Really, oh. Go stay, go back in the car if you're so cold. You had to pick the coldest night of the millennium, didn't you? What are you supposed to stay in the car? I don't want to sit in there by myself. I don't want to miss anybody. No one's stupid enough to be out here in this freezing weather. What are you supposed to be in? I can 
use that to, to, for my brain to be loaded in the dock warehouse. It's good, that's real progress. Leave me alone. I, however, am getting my brain together and I'm getting my future and job and to the real world. Nuts. True. The real world? You're going right from mom's bosom to Uncle Sam's, clothed, fed, and told what to do, and you might get killed in the process. Mistaken for a Southeast Asian and blown to bits. Javier, for Christ's sake, it's 1980. It's peacetime. Accidents can happen in peacetime. Accidents don't happen in peacetime, not for Marines. Promise me you won't develop a drug habit or go to Iran. Promise me you won't run for public office. You're just all hopeless. <laughs> and you're just all hopeless, and uh, I would. I am not asshole. I, I don't really like <laughs> I don't know the I am not.
nearing the end of the Imagine 2019 showcase, how are you doing? Yeah. My name is Professor Ali, and I'm Professor Makalala Bregan, um, and we are the co-festival organizers. Um, we're here to tell you that if you like a lot of the things that you've seen, please uh, sign up for a performance class. These are all a result of being in a performance class. Specifically, if you sign up during the spring, you get to be part of this festival. Um, with one special exception, that was the Link Dance Club. That is a dance club on this campus. Lots of fans. Yes, and the beauty of performance is that we are not just telling people, we're actually showing them. And it's, it's a very different when you actually do it in your body and when you bring your message into your body and you're out to the world. So there's a kind of magic that we're able to do collectively. Hello, folks. <laughs> we got some little folks in the audience. Um, there's a magic that happens collectively as a, when we put the Um, you know, from the set design, to the stage design, to the lighting, to the sound, to the documentation, I, we hope that you all are realizing the thoughtfulness and the commitment and the hard work that has gone into creating a production of this size. And we hope to continue to birth these kinds of creative visions on this campus, on this land. Um, and this is the kind of work that we are really dedicated to as a group of performers and performance artists on campus. We didn't have this level of performance just a couple of years ago. We didn't have this level of like designing and you know bringing in onto a stage you know um, performers and uh, students being able to really express themselves in this kind of a professional you know setting so there's a transforming that happens when we do this work and we really invite folks to come in and to take classes with Professor Doyle to take classes with Professor Hathaway to take classes with Professor Garcia Snyder and uh, both Anita and my Self to really experience the power of performance. So these works have been curated for a reason. They represent the most outstanding performances out of the classes. Either the classes themselves vote to put these pieces in or the faculty selects. But all of the works are curated and we've also set a certain rhythm to get us to this point. We're making this particular announcement right now because the two pieces you're about to see, we wanna be able to give what some people may call a trigger warning. For us, it's a mindfulness. It's a, a we wanna let you know that you're gonna be hearing some things that might provoke you. It might evoke you and it may even trigger some things that are going on inside of you that you've carried with you into this room. So I wanna give that, um, a big sort of attempt to let you know that the next couple pieces deal with real life issues, with war, with trauma, and you may even hear sound effects that may be triggering in the form of gunshots and bombings, okay? But I want you to open up your hearts and open up your being to these pieces. Like I said, there's a reason we've curated these in, and there's a, there's a lot of work that both of our classes do in embodiment and in honoring both empathy and compassion. And so with that, I wanna kind of leave it there so that we can keep going with the show, okay? Thank you. And one more little thing. At the end, we're just gonna have a, sh uh, a series of thank yous, and we'd appreciate if everyone's really here to recognize the folks that have put in, put in hard work. So please don't just leave out at the end. We're gonna do a very quick thank you and gratitude for all the folks that are here and contributing. Um, and then one final announcement is to clear the aisles for the end pieces and to be careful of the stage lines right here, okay? Especially my three babies here. You guys need to get up, little girls. <laughs> okay. We acknowledge this campus, the University of Washington Bothell, belonging.
to the Willow Sammamish people. We request permission of their ancestors, past and present. We express deep gratitude for their care. We acknowledge their ongoing struggle for this land, waterways, and all living things. For now, and forever.
touching peace. Can we get a round of applause for all of our performances today? We have some thank yous to do. So without further ado, I want to thank the, well, Alive 3.0 Performance Festival, Curricular Acts, Artist Residency, and the Imagine Showcase are made possible with generous support of the IAS Dean's Fund iDisco Research Interest Group Initiative, IAS Diversity Committee, UW Diversity Center and UW Diversity Council, and American Ethnic Study Curricular Area Working Group. I also want to give a shout out to the Alive team. You've probably seen them. We're wearing these shirts. We're doing back of the house, front of the house, tech. We made pretty much all of this stuff happen, and uh, I want to give a shout out to those guys. So let's put hands together for that. I also want to uh, give a visit to uh, the set design team for making these trees, Hannah Kane and Savannah Ruth Kem. Another round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. These trees were uh, transplanted from our round table uh, that I earlier uh, discussed with uh, Greg Deal and all those other people. Um, the trees were inspired by their incredible work as well as uh, animist Japanese trees but now with added paper roots. Yes. And so there's a couple of folks that have really gone above and beyond and have just enlivened our campus um, in so many ways, not only as artists, not only as committed activists and uh, artists in service of community, but just folks who love art and who love working in community. Um, one of the first folks that we'd like to thank is Chanel. <laughs> She's working right now, so we're going to have to make her hate work for a moment. Come on, say Chanel, please. Let's call you out. But we do want to thank you. And Chanel has really... Um, Chanel ha is our stage manager. Come on up. Um, Chanel has been our stage manager, meaning that she's working long hours tirelessly and really learning on her feet, literally learning what it means to call cues, to print cue sheets, to get like 20, never mind, 20, like 80 cast and crew members together. And she's done it with real grace, with real calm, and it's just very much a pleasure to work with. So thank you so much.
We also really like to thank someone whose work, if without their work, we would not have this incredible set. We have built, in the course of a couple of short weeks, eight panels, which you see here, that are folding, and that stand, and that are basically allowing us to have a theater where before it was just a dull, dra uh, drab conference room, right? And so someone had to buy that wood, <laughs> had to figure out how to put it together in a way that's workable for a stage, had to get all the painting together, had to you know bring all the students together to make this set happen, and it's transportable, so now we can use it year after year, and in different, different settings, not only here, but in our new performance studio, which we've created as a black box this year. So we'd really like to thank Professor Gavin Doyle. And um, where would I be without a partner in this world? <laughs> Um, this person I have gotten to know since I made my way up from Oakland um, to Seattle, and we gradually gotten to know each other over the last uh, couple of years. This person, I, I, it's hard for me to really put into words. If I could do a little dance for you right now, I'd do that. But um, really, they have been tireless. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know how she has the energy. You know, I'm like, if we could just bottle this energy, we we would be billionaires, maybe the, the first trillionaire. <laughs> um, this person has just been tireless in their dedication to enlivening this campus with performance. They also are just really an incredible, thoughtful artist in their own right, who shows their art and tours really around the world. Um, you know, bringing their vision to different places around the world. And, and, and we're so blessed on this campus to have someone with that level of awareness, with that level of skill, with that level of um, um, And then I just also want to say that as a collaborator, Anetta Ali. just been an incredible gift to me. <laughs> it's, it's rare to really be able to, it's rare to be able to collaborate on a production this size and, and not come to, to blows. <laughs> and we really have it. It's kind of amazing, you know. Um, we really flow together and we're able to fill in each other's gaps and able to really understand and respect each other in our art forms. And, and I feel really lucky that I'm not just doing this on my own, because for me to really do this kind of work, it means to do it in collaboration and to do it with the work of everyone, really, in this, in this um, group, in this cast, and in this crew. So thank you so much, Professor Ali, for your dedication and for really bringing our campus alive. Enjoy the show. Please sign up for the classes. Come back, see us again. See us in UW one in our in our offices, but don't see us this weekend because we're gonna be sleeping. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much.